Hi there. In our last lecture, we looked at creating a virtual environment as well as how to install uh, libraries within the virtual environment, and one of those being Django. In this lecture, we will look at how uh, we can use uh, Django's powerful shell commands to generate code for us. So essentially, we can generate an entire application uh, and just pass in the placeholders for uh, what we want to call it. Um, I also want to give you a brief introduction into migrations as well as into how um, you can use Django Shell to create a super user for you to log into the admin area. Now, just one thing to remember is that although Django is not strictly a content management system, the same way that WordPress uh, is specifically a content management system, Django functions as a framework. So you don't need to have an admin area when creating a, a Django site, but if you want Django to function as a content management system, as well as a powerful framework, you can create an admin interface for Django uh, very, very easily. So that is what we're going to be looking at now. And this is going to create the basis for what will be our quote unquote blog uh, uh, initial application that we create. Cool. So the first thing that we would like to do is just make sure that we are in our virtual environment. So we can see that we're in virtual environments uh, test which is fine for now. I really don't care what the name of the virtual environment is as long as we have Django installed. So what we did in the previous um, lecture is we installed Django into this virtual environment. So if I run Python dash M space, the name of the library, uh, which we want to check, which is Django dash dash version, uh, it should show us the version of this. So now we have full access to Django shell commands within this virtual environment. So let's create a Django admin area. So this is a special command called Django admin. And this is now specifically for the Django admin. Uh, and then we run uh, the function within that called start project. And then we want to pass in the name of our project. So I'm just going to call this my blog. So we're saying Django admin start project and then we're creating my blog. So if I hit return now, it has now created my blog. So if we go ls, we will see my blog is sitting inside of the Django admin area. So if I go back to Sublime Text, I can now see that my blog exists and this is great. We now have my blog and we have a manage.py file. Something to note is that the manage.py file is the file that runs all of the shell commands. So you don't have to worry too much about what is inside of this file for now, but just know that manage.py is what we, we use to run all of our uh, shell commands. Cool, the next thing that I would like to do is for us just to cd into my blog. Uh, and it will give us the same uh, file structure that we saw in Sublime Text. So my blog, uh, my blog app, and then manage.py. And what I want to do is I want to now make use of this manage.py that we talk about. And what you'll notice with my blog is that it really just has a, a couple of smaller things in here. What it does have is a settings.py file. Now this is a very important file because what this does is it tells Django what settings you obviously want to set and more importantly, what apps you want to use. So at the moment you can see we've got these apps here installed, but now we need to somehow map these to a database. So how do we do this? Well, the way that we do that is with something called migrations. And what that will allow us to do is it will allow us to create a set of instructions that tell Django uh, how uh, or, or, or what tables and what columns and rows within tables to create in a database. By default, Django uses the MySQL 
light database or sql light 3 database so this is these settings here are the default database settings if we would like to use something like fully fledged mysql we can definitely do that if we would like to use something like uh, mongodb we can do that as well django is really flexible with what kind of database um, you you use what kind of uh, model structure you use but but just to remember that, uh, that this is only possible because Django's separation of concerns and the way that it's been written that it has been written is very very verbose so you can really use any database that you want to on this cool so now let's create our migration so that we at least have some sort of an admin area to work with and the way that we do this is we go back to our console again and now, like I mentioned before, we make use of our manage.py file. So we run it. It's a Python command. So we need to run it through the Python compiler, as we did before, manage.py. And then we run migrate. And what this should do now is this should migrate all of our, um, our settings and uh, map them to uh, some sort of database um, instance. Cool. And what it is now doing is it is now applying all of these migrations. So if we now go back to our uh, file, you'll see it has now created a DB SQL Lite 3. And this is uh, unreadable as it's just a binary file. Uh, we, we can't read it, but we know that this database has been created. And at a later stage, if we, if we use a database administration program, we should be able to actually see what is being created within this um, migration. So this is really, really nice for us. We now actually have uh, migrations running and we can see um, that it is now creating usernames. It's now creating all sorts of, of nice things for us. Cool. So the next thing which is uh, very important is for us to actually create a backend user. So at the moment, we don't have a backend user. So what I want to do is run the same Python manage.py and then create super user. So this is how we get around uh, username and password. Initially, if we have access to the console, we can create super users. Uh, lovely. And we can choose what we want our name to be. So uh, I don't really want to use my full name. It's a bit long, so I'm just going to say admin. Uh, email address is rich Lloyd Miles at gmail. Dot com. Awesome. And I'm going to enter in my password and my password again. So this is a really nice, neat way of creating users. Cool. So now we've created our user and our Django project is ready to rock and roll.